Hi guys, Dr. David here. I just want to spend a couple of minutes with you sharing a story about the last year or so of my life and what I've been up to. And in that time, I discovered something quite profound. It was probably around about this time last year, perhaps a little bit earlier, that a pattern started to emerge uh, in my office. So the patients kept on telling me about their lack of inspiration and their, in fact, their distaste and their frustration at working at jobs they really just didn't love and were really just uninspired by and weren't getting paid to do what they love, not even close most of the time. And in many cases, people didn't even know what it was that they would love. So if you said to someone, here's $10 million, go and do what you love, many people wouldn't even know where to start. They'd sort of just go on holidays and do these generic kind of social idealisms, but not really a clear idea of what they'd love to contribute to society. So at first, that didn't mean a lot. I took that on and I tried to assist people with it as best as I could. But then that pattern started to appear again and again, uh, quite a lot. Um, every day, more than once a day, I was hearing that. So I started to just write down a few notes and as time went on, the evidence built. So I thought there's something to this. So I started doing some reading and some research. And over the course of a few months, I did quite a lot of research, read a lot, a lot of books and studied a lot of different material, went to seminars and gained a lot of useful information on this topic. Often I wasn't even looking for it, it just came up, but it's funny how life works like that. So the end result was the book that I've written called Making a Living Versus Making a Dying, How to Do What You Love and Love What You Do. And in there I detail what I've discovered as the nine steps to finding, creating and then living that love and getting paid to do what you love. And I'm really excited about it because it was such a natural process, the, the research and writing of this book. And it's now an audio book that you can purchase online and it's currently being published by Balboa Press, which who is a division of Hay House, for a paperback copy. And I'm also thinking about doing seminars for it as well to engage a live audience for the same uh, topic and take people through the steps. So that could be happening around the middle of next year and I'll keep you posted. So the book, and the audio book details the nine steps. So chapter one is kind of like the laws of the universe, the things that are discovered that are inherent within the nature of the universe and are unbendable. They're just the way that things are. And oftentimes people have kind of an illusion about what those things are. So I break those illusions and kind of smash some of those myths and show it the way it really is. And utilizing those principles and practices of the planet we live on, we can use that to live a more effective life. Essentially, it's about getting the right perspective on things and not being weighed down by the baggage that we carry around. We're all carrying around baggage of some sort, so it gives some really practical tips on how to clear that out. Once we've got to that point, the next thing we need to do, which is chapter two, is to discover what's really important to us, what we might call our priorities or our values. And this is super important probably the most important chapter in the whole book because once you really define what your values are, what your priorities are in life, you can structure a life around those things. It's certainly been instrumental for my own life. It's something I do regularly, probably about every couple of months, up to about every three months, I sit down and I write out my values. And I'll show you how to do that in the book. And once you've got that hierarchy of values, your life will change. You start to structure things about the way they actually, things that actually matter. You stop living under social idealisms of what you think you should do and you start doing what you actually love, what's inspiring to you. It's a huge shift. And then we move on to chapter three, which is about discovering your why and how when you have a big enough why, the hows take care of themselves. And we look about how to do that and why you would want to find out your why. And if you, even if you're an individual, whether you're a mother, whether you are the CEO or a large corporation, does not matter. Having a strong why, which is linked to your values, is really important and instrumental in doing what you love and being effective with getting your message out there or your product or your service. And then chapter four details how to step into the next phase or transition of your life. A lot of people have a tendency to want to kind of just dump their history and move on to the next thing. 
And at times that's appropriate to just sort of let things go. But in this context, we detail how it's really important to take your history and turn it into a benefit to you. So it empowers you to move on to the next step, which then leads us to chapter five, which talks about turning your dream or your inspiration into a service or a product that's going to benefit people in some way. So converting what it is you love to do into a monetary form. So you can share your gifts with the world and get rewarded for it. So there's a little bit about there about fair exchange. And fair exchange is always about giving out and receiving what you're worth. And not asking for too much, but never asking for not enough. And it's about having that balance and that harmony within uh, finances. Chapter 6 is about breaking down the seven most common fears. We find the seven of the most common fears are what hold people back. If we can identify them and then dissolve them, they no longer become a roadblock and people can go on and do what, actually what it is that they love. I've seen many people spend years and I've seen people spend literally decades held back by certain fears which are actually illusions and we'll talk about that in chapter 6. Chapter 7 talks about individual worth and about creating a, a field of self-love and knowing how to love yourself and then once you love yourself that the world will value you and love you back. And that's a really important step that people miss, essentially self-esteem. Huge, huge aspect. We go into details about how to do that, how to identify the weaknesses there and how to create strength out of those perceived weaknesses. Chapter eight then is about finding and cultivating a wealth consciousness or an abundance mindset. And this is really important because we've spent our childhood oftentimes and we go around through society picking up certain ideas and beliefs that get stuck in our subconscious and they tend to run us. Things like money is the root of all evil, money doesn't grow on trees, and money isn't spiritual are, uh, just to name a few, that are really big ones that will hold people back from feeling like it's okay to give a great service and receive a great reward. And at the end of the day, that's really what this whole book is about, is finding what it is that your message is, what your masterpiece is, what your mission and your message is, delivering it to the world, and then receiving back what's fair for that. And to me, that's one of the most beautiful and satisfying and fulfilling things in the world is to find your message and your mission, give it to the world and receive back for it. That's such a beautiful harmony. And that's why I wrote this book really, is I had that sense that people needed to hear more about that. So that's what you get in the nine chapters. So finally, the ninth chapter is about putting all that together and creating a master plan. So if you don't put a plan together, it's never really going to happen. So we talk about how to detail that out and actually make sure that it becomes a reality. And then finally, just a brief conclusion, we wrap it all up. So I'm really excited about this book. I spent a long time putting it all together. It came together quite naturally, but it took some time. And I'm really, really happy with the result. And I'm happy to and really excited to share it with everyone. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, Go ahead to the product page, you can see it there. It's currently available as an audio book, an MP3 file which you can download. Also, like I said, it's being published by Balboa Press, so it'll be available shortly in paper book. When I do the seminar coming up next year, I'll be giving away the book in paperback and in MP3 file for free as part of that. But in the meantime, until then, grab a copy and tell me what you get out of it. Do the processes, do the exercise and then share it here. I'd love to hear how it's transformed your life, even if it's just in a small way. I'd love to hear the shifts that occurs from that. It certainly made a big difference in my life, finding out these principles and practices. And I'm really excited to hear what happens in your life as a result of it. So share that with us.